Hey everyone, Omni Couch Reviews. We're back today. Today we had another marathon run. Not quite as long as two weeks ago, but we did see two movies today. And the first one we're going to be reviewing is Atomic uh, Blonde. Directed by David Lynch, one of the uh, half of the co-directors that gave us John Wick One. This is the story of. It's not David Lynch. Who is it? I think it's David Lynch. I'm pretty sure it said Lynch in at the end of the movie. Okay, David Lynch. Whatever. Anyway, anyway, it's the story of a COVID operate who is going into 1989 Germany because a secret list of all the spies names has been compromised so she go, she is going in there to get it out and the movie proceeds from there there's a lot of exposition in this movie this is a movie that first of all it's wildly mismarketed this is marketed as a John Wick but with a female lead. And this isn't that type of movie. This is a spy movie. This is a Jane Bondish type of movie. Actually, I think it's... I think there's a rip-off of the 70s uh, Mission Impossible movie. Or a TV show. Um, and it kind of... That's kind of one of the reasons it doesn't work. <clears throat> This is a gorgeous looking movie. What you see in the trailers is what's going to be represented on the screen. But there's a lot less action. What do you think? <coughs> there's too much exposition. At least the action scenes are good, but then again, there isn't that much of that. And we saw this in 40X, and there wasn't much of 40X. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We saw this in 4 There was no reason for this movie to be available in 40X. We've seen six movies now? Six, seven? Yeah. Movies in 40X. This is the one that... This is easily, easily the one that shouldn't have been in that type of theater. You see this in standard definition, you'll be just fine. Um, I kind of thought... You weren't there when I saw it, but when I saw John Wick Chapter 2 in 40X, I didn't really think it was going to be worth it, but it absolutely was. And I'll, just for two scenes, this movie, there were long stretches where I was just, either my mind was wandering, or I was just thinking to myself, damn it, I just paid $30 a ticket for this and nothing's happening. Um, and it's not a bad acted movie. Charlie, uh... Charlie Sterum does a very good job as the main character. James McAvoy does a very good job as the... Is he a British spy? Or was he German? I think he was British. Yeah, he I'm was... Sure. Yeah, he was fine. There was a lot of good characters. Um, the shots were set up very well. The action pieces were gorgeous. Even the fight scene with... Um, when they ran into the house. Oh, yeah. And, the and she used the ropes. No, not that one. The the, the oh, first the other one. The, yeah, the one with the where she tied the guy up and then jumped out. Like the action was really well done in this movie. It's just it was so not engaging. Like I found myself thinking about other things. And it kind of has to do with the plot, and also kind of has to do with the way the plot is set up. The plot is set up in a way where she's introduced talking it's an interview basically she's talking about the movie so you know she's not gonna get die in the movie because she's giving the interview about what's happening and a lot of the stuff they set up you kind of saw coming like well you're in the city so we can do spoilers um, you knew James McAvoy was going to be a bad guy. I said it like 20 minutes before he, he turned bad. Yeah. And even the, the main... This is a very fun world, the action. The stairway scene. Oh my god, everyone's talking about it because it is brutal. And I... 
I dare put it up with anything in John Wick. Because it's very realistic. Like, she has this... Charlie Theron's character has this beautiful fight scene. Going through the stairs where she gets beat the hell out of. And I'm kind of waiting for the feminists to come out there and say, Oh, you can't have a man hitting a woman because it is... But she kicks just as much ass as everyone else. Um, what did you think of the soundtrack? It's similar to John Wick, but... No, this felt Baby Driver-like. There was a lot of freaking music. A lot. So... Some of it worked, some of it didn't. Um, I really like that the, that one character who was in The Mummy. Um, if... You know, this is a rated R movie for a reason. Um, there is nudity. And there is a lesbian scene. But it's... I will give it credit. In a bad movie... Um, the lesbian scene would be treated cheaply. And it kind of... And it wasn't. It was really just two people who actually liked each other. You know? For whatever that's worth. I, I kind of... I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't feel tawdry either, so I'll, I'll take it on that, but the movie as a whole, like, I kind of found myself, you know, in between fight scenes, there weren't much. Um, John Goodman is in this movie, and he doesn't really do a lot, so I got to see him be wasted in two movies this year, this movie and Kong Skull Island. Um... I remember David Leach is also going to be doing Deadpool 2 next year, so you know the fight scenes are going to be on point as far as the story goes. Not so much. Um, this is an maybe if it would have been marketed better or marketed truer to what it is, I would have found a little bit more enjoyment in it. But while I did like it. Don't see it in 40x. Um, see it as a matinee. It's, you'll have some fun with it. It is very stylish and it looks very pretty. Um, anything? Any lines or scenes you especially like? Other than the stairwell scene? Alright. Um... Yeah, I kind of feel disappointed in this, but it's not a bad movie. It's just not engaging. It doesn't grab you. You know, and this is based on a comic, so we saw two movies today based on comics. Um, we don't know the comics, the source material, so... But I kind of wish... This, is a, this would actually work better as a Netflix miniseries. Because you can, you can kind of see it be chopped up. And it would work longer in like six or seven episodes. But as a, a whole movie, you know. If they do make a part two, I hope they get the story a little bit more grounded. But, yeah. That's it. Number? It was a set, I think I said 6.2. No, I think you gave it a 7. No, I gave Valerian a 7, I think. Oh, no, 6.5. Um, I'm going to stay with the same number. So, to make the math easier, because I don't have to do math now, 6.5 for both of us. It's currently 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. If you have a chance, check it out. Definitely, when it comes out on Redbox or Rental and stuff, you know, go see it. You'll have some fun. The fight scenes are pretty imaginative and they're really good. The style is very good. It's just the story is lacking. So, that's it for now. We'll be reviewing another movie in a little bit.